The last week has been a dark one for Ghana's fight against illegal mining. Details of a leaked 36-page report by the former chair of the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining. For the opposition NDC, the report only confirms worrying details captured in an investigative piece by Al Jazeera. The explosive revelations contained in Al Jazeera's Gold Mafia investigative piece explain why the president's supposed fight against Galamse has been a spectacular failure. Galamse was obviously bound to flourish under the corrupt Ekufuado Bawomia regime because it was the central source for illegal gold purchases. For the NDC, the revelations in the expose reveal a worrying trend indicative of the presidency embroiled in corruption. The question every objective Ghanaian should be asking is how come the names of the president and his vice keep popping up in such shady deals and corruption scandals? Why always them? It could neither be mere speculation nor influence peddling any longer. This trend has now received such unaviable global publicity and must worry every well-meaning Ghanaian. In both matters, though, the call is unanimous. A live bipartisan probe into both allegations by Parliament and the special prosecutor. As a further step to back our demands, the NDC shall formally, in the coming days, submit a request to both the clerk of parliament and the office of the special prosecutor to initiate the necessary investigations into the gold mafia documentary as it relates to Ghana and the Galamse report of Professor Frimpon Boateng. For the NDC, they will go as far as hitting the streets should there be attempts to stop justice from being exacted. We are demanding justice and we are demanding action. And if they don't give us justice, we will hit the streets, we will go to their homes. enjoy from Eric Mawena Igbeta, TV3 News, NDC headquarters, Accra. Reminder, you're still watching News 360. This is our major news bulletin for the day. We're streaming live on Facebook. We're also live on your DSTV channel 279. Let's hop on to Zoom right now. Uh, there's a former chief executive officer of the Minerals Commission, Dr. Tony Aubin, who's just joined us. Thank you, sir, for your time. Uh, on two separate occasions, you've had calls to write to uh, CG Alaska, uh, which later metamorphosed into Heritage Imperial Mining Company Limited over alleged illegal mining operations when you were at the helm of affairs at the Minerals Commission. And, and, and to batteries that point, today the NDC uh, took chance to mention your name. Uh, what's your own view about this company and the activities that we are led to have involved in? Well, thank you very much and uh, good evening to your viewers. Um, I don't personally know the company. My interaction with them is more professional and, and, and of course, on, on business. Now, um, CNJ Alaska, I think in 2016 or so, obtained um, a prospecting license uh, to mine gold. Now, the requirement for any license, I mean, for you to exercise the, the, the permit or the license, are, are, are different at every stage. If you have a reconnaissance license, you are required to only do basic, maybe um, water research, basic geophysical study. And you are not required to dig. You are not required to drill or even uh, uh, trench. If you go into prospecting, you are also not required to do uh, mining, natural mining. You are, you are required to you can trench, you can drill, uh, uh, or do both. But, and of course, on very rare occasions, you may be allowed to do 
what they call bulk sampling. But generally, you cannot mine uh, under that circumstance. So after the, the grant of the license, the prospecting license, we received report, some of it even came from chiefs, that uh, mining was going on. So our team was sent there. They, they went there you know, about twice. And it, they came back with a report that really mining was going there, contrary to the requirement of a prospecting license. So naturally, um, I had no question at all uh, than to write to them under the powers vested in me at that time to ask them to stop their operations until we were satisfied that the mining activities are stopped and all any environmental damage caused was remedied. Uh, so that that's that that's was was done and was in line with 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 the grant of of the mineral license that I mean the the prospecting license. Beyond Indeed, beyond mining illegally, did your investigations ascertain that the mining activities were necessarily posing environmental threat? First of all, we didn't have to look at the environmental threat first. We make, once you have a license, you are enjoined to follow the requirement of the license. And uh, the, the, the regulator, in this case, the Minerals Commission, had the power to, to, to revoke or suspend the license until you follow, because you know, mining is so complex and sometimes very damaging. So the Minerals Commission and other regulators ensure that your activities conform to the requirements that, that you'd have been given. So that was first. The next was the fact that I think it was in a forest area. So naturally, uh, you need to mine in a certain way that you will not unduly uh, damage the, the, the forest. But that would have been the, the, the responsibility of the EPA, which we collaborated with all the time. So, so uh, for us, we wanted them to conform to the license. If you have a prospecting license, you are telling government that you are going to do a research. You're going to explore to see if there was adequate gold so you can tell the commission that we have enough gold. And then we will ask you to tell us how you are going to mine it, how you are going to manage the environment and all that. So you just don't take that license and then start mining. It was completely illegal. You've heard the name of this particular company being mentioned again in Professor Frimpon Barton's report to the Jubilee House. Now, uh, there have been calls for public inquiry into this report. Uh, all the back and forth, the name calling, the issue about uh, illegal mining, uh, and the fact that we've had very, very uh, strong and influential people uh, being directly linked or involved in this particular activity. What's your own suggestion moving forward? What must we do? Do you subscribe to the setting up of a bipartisan committee or a commission? Or, and will this necessarily be the solution? Well, I think if an illegal act has been committed, then the process must be... And then, of course, if you, if you look at what Professor Frimpon Boateng wrote, uh, much of which, by my personal judgment, were, were correct, um, then obviously uh, the commission of inquiry would be, would be the right thing uh, and, uh, and whatever action according to law would be, would be imposed, must be imposed because we need to indicate to society, to our country that we mean business when we talk about fighting illegality, especially in the exploitation of our natural resources. I mean, Ghana is crying for good water. Uh, the forests have been mutilated in a great measure. Land has been heavily degraded. And usually when these things happen and they do not conform to regulation, then they will just, it will be like a fly by night. They will mine, get the resources in there, and then off they go. And that is not the way our resources must be managed. I am um, a student of, I mean, the development of our natural resources. If we have gold sitting in the belly of the earth and we can mine to help us, we by all means have to mine, but we must, we must mine that sensibly, sustainably. We must mine that so that current generation benefit as well as future generation as well. So for me, anything that will be done to ensure that justice to the environment is done, our, our, our laws have been fully respected, regardless of who is involved. I mean, I'm so much for it.
Dr. Tony Obin, I've got to say a big thank you to you, uh, Tony Obin, uh, formerly held the position of uh, Chief Executive of the Minerals Commission. Let's continue with the rest of our stories. And early in the day, Member of Parliament for South Dai, Roxanne Nelson Defiamitbo, petitioned the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Shraj, to investigate contents of former Environment Minister Professor Frimpo Boatin's Gallup C report. The MP wants the investigative body to exercise its mandate and probe the main violations of human rights, corrupt practices, and issues of conflict of interest by persons cited in the report. The a petition filed by lawyers for the South Dai MP also wants Shraj to investigate claims of complicity of the former Environment Minister made by former Secretary to the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining, Charles Bissou, after the report became public. Let's now listen to the lawyer for the South Dai MP, Nick Makbo Samwa Ado, who submitted the petition. We have had many, many instances where even in the darkest times in this country, the charge has stood up matters of corruption, matters of public interest. And this is one of it. Matters to do with the Galamsey menace is a threat to our water bodies and a threat to human life. And so it actually is an existential issue that we must all take into account and take seriously. It goes beyond the issues of corruption and allegations of conflict of interest that have been made against certain public offices. Our concern is the degradation of the environment. That is a human rights issue, which actually goes to the right to life. And so I would appeal to you, the media, to follow up this petition. We have done our part. We have done what is expected of us. We have activated the process. Let us follow this particular petition to them, to the latter. Because clearly, the presidency has indicated that it's not interesting. They say it is hearsay. And so we don't expect the president to give us any permission of inquiry. Luckily, the architecture of our constitution has made it possible for us to have other independent arms or other agencies that can investigate whether or not the other arms of government are interested. Parliament has not responded. The executive says they're not interested. So we only have Shraj as our last um, bulwark. If they also fail us, then we are doomed. Right, let's stay a while longer on this developing story. Uh, Joseph Wittel is Commissioner of the Commission of Human Rights and Administrative Justice. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. And good to have you on News 360. Uh, can you, first of all, confirm whether Shraj has had or received this petition? The procedures of the Commission is require first that the word undertake an assessment of the complaint because it's not every complaint that is filed that actually meets the standards expected of a complaint that can be ad admitted for investigation so we will do the assessment we will determine which of the mandates if any have been invoked by the petition after which if there are any further and better particulars in terms of clarity of documents that will, will make us make up our minds, and we think so, we need them, we will require that of the lawyers or of the complainants, and then we will undertake a preliminary investigation before we will determine whether we are going to uh, request the respondents mentioned in the petition and the attached reports to submit comments in respect of their allegations against them specifically.